Welcome to day 35 of our Lent series. Tuesday of the fifth week of Lent, and today is a break time. We celebrate Saint Joseph. Today is the 19th of March, meaning we take a break from our traditional Lenten mood to celebrate the solemnity of Saint Joseph, the husband of Mary. It is a solemnity because it belongs to the highest rank of the Catholic feasts. So today, we get to sing Gloria and say the creed at Mass. What can we learn from St. Joseph? 1. St. Joseph was a just man. The Gospel refers to him as a righteous man or a just man. Matthew chapter 1 verse 19 and also as a man who did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. Matthew chapter 1 verse 24 to 25. Being a just man made him a great man. His greatness is primarily on the account of his moral righteousness and obedience to the will of God. Being just also means he was a man of integrity. He was well respected in the community. He had a good name. He was a man of justice. He was not a wayward person, and he believed in doing what is right at all times. Can it be said about me or about you that I am a just person? That you are a just person? Do you and I practice selective integrity? St. Joseph teaches us to be people of integrity and justice in everything that we do. Number two, St. Joseph did not take joy in seeing the pain of others. St. Joseph's integrity is further highlighted by his initial decision to divorce Mary quietly upon learning of her pregnancy before they came to be together as husband and wife, seeking to spare her shame while remaining faithful to God's law. Matthew chapter 1 verse 19. Remember during St. Joseph's time, a young girl who got pregnant outside marriage or before marriage was supposed to be killed. St. Joseph never took joy and never wanted to see this happen to Mary though he did not know the origin of Mary's pregnancy. When I happen to suspect others of doing wrong, what is my immediate reaction? Do I keep things to myself or we begin to gossip and announce to others? Number three, Saint Joseph was obedient to God at his own expense. We are told that when Joseph woke up from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him. He agreed to play the role of the foster father to the Son of God. This meant that he agreed to live as a celibate for the rest of his life for the sake of Jesus Christ. His own form of celibacy would even be more demanding even that unlike other celibates, he would have to live in the same house with a woman not related to him. He never touched Mary, since Mary is perpetually a virgin. Can I make sacrifices for God? Am I only interested in what I can get from God rather than what I should give to God? Am I faithful to the demands of my calling in life? Do I keep my vows and promises to God? Saint Joseph teaches us always be obedient to the will of God. Number four. Saint Joseph was a man of faith. The strongest virtue which Joseph manifested amidst all the crises he went through was faith. It takes great faith to agree to do what Joseph did for Jesus and Mary. 
Do you notice that God only spoke to him through dreams? Unlike the case of Mary and Zechariah, who had an angel appear to them on a broad day, Joseph had to depend on his dreams. Joseph had four dreams recorded in the scripture, and from each dream he did the will of God. In his first dream, Joseph is told, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that the child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Matthew chapter 1 verse 20 to 21. In his second dream, Joseph is told, Rise, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you. Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. Matthew chapter 2 verse 13. In his third dream, Joseph is told, Rise, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the child's life are dead. Matthew chapter 2 verse 20. And in his fourth dream, Joseph is warned to go instead to his Galilee rather than Judea. Matthew chapter 2 verse 22. It takes great faith to believe that what we see in our dreams is not simply a figment of our imagination. It takes great faith to believe that a young woman would actually conceive without knowing a man. It takes great faith and obedience to suffer for a child who is not your own, to take his to Egypt at night, not even in the car, and finding him in the temple after three days of toil, and Jesus is not even remorseful. Do I put a limit in my mind to what God can do? Do I really believe that with God all things are possible? Am I willing to act based on what God reveals to me daily through my study of the scriptures? Lastly, Joseph is a man of fatherly care. Joseph was a worthy successor of the great patriarchs of the old covenant, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He followed the call of God through the mysterious circumstances that surrounded the coming of Jesus, the long-awaited Messiah, who fulfilled the promises made to Abraham and his offspring. God entrusted this silent, humble man with the unique privilege of raising, protecting, teaching, and training Jesus as a growing child. Joseph accepted his role of fatherly care with faith, trust, and obedience to the will of God. He is a model for all who are entrusted with the care of the young and the instruction and protection of the young. Joseph is faithful witness and a servant to God's unfolding plan of redemption. May St. Joseph continue to intercede for us. Be blessed.